Jim Mars, break down the, the, the true cutting edge and what could revolutionize everything. People want solutions. Here it is. Okay, well, let's, uh, let, let, this goes all the way back. Let's go back to the turn of the 20th century, and Rudolf Diesel uh, invented a diesel engine that he originally uh, designed to run on organic matter, okay? <laughs> you remember the uh, Back to the Future movie, and they put banana peels and, and I don't know, coffee grounds and stuff in the little uh, fusion thing to, to run the time machine. He built a diesel to run on organic matter, but that would have interfered with the petroleum-based industry. So what happened to Rudolph Diesel? Gee, it was terrible. He fell overboard crossing the English Channel. Too bad. Now, and that goes all the way back. I could, we don't have the time, but I could sit here and give you at least a dozen examples, some of which I had direct personal experience The FBI with. on record raided Tesla's laboratory. Oh, yeah, Tesla. You know, he, he's they burned out. his laboratory down. There's there's things going on right now today. Some years back, there was a kid up in the northwest who said, I've got a I've developed a carburetor that will get 100 miles on one gallon of gas. And he got reporters. He drove them 100 miles. They checked it out. They made sure there wasn't any some trick to it. It was legit. What happened to that? It's gone again. By I, the way, I, I've seen magazines in the 60s and stuff, General Motors and Ford with carburetors with 75 miles to the gallon, cars that go 150 miles an hour. And you tell me the Japanese today can't do that? Well, the Germans are making a Volkswagen over in Europe right now that's getting 56, 60 miles to the gallon. But you can't buy it in the United States, okay? And why is that? Okay, because the elite, the very people you're always preaching about, these people have a monopoly based on petroleum, all right? It's that simple. And anything that comes up that's going to threaten that they buy it up if they don't buy it up then they then they just find and they're going to try to use on record the shortage of it in the next 50 years because they're going to artificially make it scarce to take control of the entire human civilization and that is wrong well most people truly believe today that the reason we fought in iraq afghanistan syria all these countries into Egypt is because we're trying to get their oil. Well, we don't need oil. We don't need oil. Well, Leslie Clark declassified that actually illegally. I mean, he admitted he was in the Pentagon and saw the plan to not let those countries sell the oil to create artificial scarcity. Saddam's crime was over-pumping. Exactly. In fact, see, people don't realize that. I hear people all the time say, well, we invaded Iraq because we wouldn't steal their oil. Let me tell you something, folks. We were only getting 16% of our imported oil from Iraq prior to our invasion. And once we invaded, then they set some of the oil fields on fire. There was fighting going on. We didn't even get that much. They cut down the amount of oil we were getting from Iraq. People wake don't up. get artificial scarcity. No, nah, wake up. The oil companies are capping oil fields all over the U.S. The biggest oil, oil reserve in the United States is, and if anybody remembers their history, which they don't, you may recall that the biggest scandal early in the 20th century was the Teapot Dome scandal. That's where the government was selling off drilling rights to the Naval Oil Reserves out in California, Teapot Dome, and it caused a huge scandal. And, you know, those fields have still not been... And guess who controls that today? Al Gore, Mr. Uh -huh. Anti-Oil, Occidental Petroleum. Mr. Carbon Tax Man. You know, he He's one of the biggest oil men in the world. Now, now let's expand on this. Because actually, big oil is actually what's financing the carbon tax to shut down coal, their competition, <laughs> which would make energy cheap again. Right. Right, exactly. And then all they can talk about is nuclear power. It's so safe and efficient that... Which is another insider deal that's horrible. And we're about to kill ourselves. The Pacific is getting irradiated. They're telling you don't eat fish. 91% of reactors are leaking worldwide. But I mean, let's get into that. Talk about hydrogen alone. Yeah. Get into solutions. Hydrogen is the way to go. Uh, I met a fellow here just the other day uh, who uh, had been an engineer and he lives in New Jersey, out in the, kind of the countryside, and he, uh, his, he runs his cars, his air conditioning, his home, his heating, his lawnmower on hydrogen, all right? And when Hurricane Sandy hit and all of his neighbors, their power went out for like a month or more, and they were in desperate need. Can you imagine no power for a month or a month and a half? And that's not off record. You were hanging out with the crows, right? They're, they're, they're researching this. Right. Yeah. yeah.
and uh, and he was telling. It was a great story because all his neighbors. He he was a bright light, so to speak, in the middle of the darkness because his lights were on and everything was operating. And his neighbors would come to his house and to take a shower and to uh, and to juice up their batteries for the. And this is on record. Uh, so the most plentiful uh, free element, uh, you know, out there is hydrogen. Uh, this, yeah. this 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 gas. Explain to people how this works. Well, you, you can take a, 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 here's what's amazing about hydrogen and, and why I don't understand, well, I do because they're greedy bastards, but I mean, the, I don't understand why we're not shifting to a hydrogen economy because, as I understand it, you can take all of the normal infrastructure, the pipelines, the pumping stations, the refineries, the, your car, you get an adjustment. Yeah, they're even going to make the money off of it, but they still yeah. don't want us to have it. Yeah, exactly. And we, and we were with a top engineer last night. He can f agree with you on yes. this. Yes, with a little tweaking, it could all run on hydrogen. Hello, there you go. The, but why not? Why are we not getting that? Because it's the most plentiful substance in the world, and they cannot get a monopoly over it. Well, that's like diamonds are really semi-precious, but they're geographically uh, restricted so they can create artificial scarcity again. Right. And they have tight control over that. The fastest way to get killed in Africa is to go out and find a diamond, you know, outside of the normal uh, chain. Yeah, they call those blood diamonds and demonize anybody trying to get money for Africa. Exactly. When really it's the... So I want to come back with more solutions, other alternative energy things, and talk about like you did yesterday, the, you know, the, the machines you saw. All you do is put water into this thing. And then it separates it all out, and, and just incredible. Right. It's as close as a perpetual motion machine as you can get. Jim Mars is our guest, and your phone calls are coming up as well. Your specific questions for our guest. Jim, you are just going a mile a minute off air about, uh, as an investigator, as a journalist, all of these alter alternate energies. And again, we were having dinner last night with a very well-known engineer who's worked in the Apollo program, but after that in petroleum engineering, you name it, he's done it. He was absolutely. And the fact that they knew 30 years ago they could have the streets be solar glass and power everything off that. I mean, they are just like they had light bulbs, famous light bulbs in San Francisco. But there's one in Dallas, too. Or is it? Uh, I remember hearing about when I was a kid at the fire station that was like 80 years old. Now it must be 100. There was one at the Palace Theater that uh, has, it was burning uh, until they finally tore it down. Uh, it had been burning since 1895. Uh, yeah, so or so something light like bulbs that. that go for 100 years, mm -hmm. why do they burn out fast now? It's planned obsolescence. Mm -hmm. That's admitted. The public doesn't know that. Everything's game. So, so, so get into it. Solar, all of it. Uh, well, it's all mindset. Uh, there is no problem with technology. I'm here to tell you, just with absolutely no fear of contradiction, that uh, there is off the shelf technology. That can solve all of our energy problems overnight. It's not so. It's not technology. It's the mental thing. Now, here's a classic example. About 30 years ago, I was inter uh, interviewing an energy expert, and I'd gotten real fired up on solar energy. And I said, "Well, you know, what about solar energy? You know, we draw uh, energy from the sun. If sun burns out, we're all in trouble anyway." And he goes. Well, that's really a good idea, he says, but, but that's 20 years in the future. Okay, hey, folks, it's 20 years. Here we are, and we still don't have it. Why? Because, listen, here is the problem in their thinking, in their training, in their conditioning. He said, do you realize it would take solar panels covering the entire state of Arizona to provide enough electricity to power the city of Los Angeles? And I went, oh, whoa, yeah, I guess so. Well, I went off and I thought about that. And, and, you know, he's right. But where's the flaw in his thinking? Central generation. He can only think in terms of generating enough electricity centrally and then piping it to L.A. Where you lose well, most of it. Yeah, and you lose most of it in the transmission. Same thing with, the, uh, with, with wind farms far away. It works to have it at your house. Right. Like the old windmill, but, but not uh, 500 miles away. So... Well, so what if everybody in Los Angeles puts solar panels on their roof? Whoa, then you power the city of Los Angeles and everybody's got their own power. And why don't we have that? Because they hadn't figured out how to make a cloud come and hang over your house if you don't pay your electric bill. Absolutely. Monopoly. Well, Monopoly. It, it's also come out in the news that if you try to hook it up on your house yourself off the grid, they won't come inspect it. They won't authorize in most cities. But, if you, but they'll, they'll subsidize it. 
and pay for part of it with taxpayer money if you hook it up and let them run it and it feeds the grid. Right. Well, now, that's the interesting thing, too. And I've lived through all this and watched it happen. When it first came out about people, uh, whether it's solar, wind generation, whatever, providing their own juice, the power companies were all opposed to it, okay? And, but then it came in anyway, and then they passed laws saying if you are producing individually uh, enough juice that you can put it back into the power system, they have to buy it back from you, okay? Now, you'd think, ooh, wait a Sounds minute. Sounds good, but it means you get an inspection, now they're running you. Well, number one, they can come on your property, they can yeah. inspect you, but here's the thing, now they're all for it, because under the law, yes, they have to buy back your excess electricity, but they get to buy it back at a cheaper price than what they're paying normally. And then some people, exactly, exactly, so it's creating a monopoly for them again of yeah. a lower price. But people they're say, But they're making money on it, so it's okay. Exactly, but the people say, well, aren't you for Obama then? He's giving tens of billions of taxpayer money a year to this. So did Spain. It bankrupted him. It's given to select insiders. He, he gave it to his buddies, and they went broke. They don't even <laughs> open a building up. <laughs> They just take the money and run. Exactly. Or they build windmills 500 miles away on record that break and don't even work and kill the birds. And That's because chances are if you looked way in into their portfolio, you'd find that actually they're heavily invested in oil and gas. Well, no, it turns out you're right. You know, again, BP is the biggest funder of all this and the biggest funder of carbon taxes. Right. They're the group that gives most of the money to fund Bilderberg as a charity. Look it up. Okay. B you mentioned BP, BP is yeah. running the clean energy movement so they can kill it. Exactly, and I just ran into some wonderful folks from California who had been getting some help, quote, help from Shell to develop hydrogen, all right? And then it, it finally, they finally realized that they weren't getting anywhere. Shell, that's Dutch oil. That's Queen uh, Beatrix. Uh, Beatrix of Holland. They don't, want, they don't want that. It's a public relations move. She owns that company. And... They they weren't doing it. In fact, if anything, they were throwing uh, you know roadblocks. They are the oh, not just that company, but on record, they the federal regulators. It's the same in Europe. Will go to anybody and go. You got a nice company here. What it's worth ten million dollars. Here's here's five hundred million. Sign it over to us, and they shut it down, and then say, look, we're green. Yeah, exactly. Well, do we have that Obama clip real quick? We're going we're gonna to play this clip because, again, he's telling Africans you can't have progress unless we have clean energy. Meanwhile, he's blocking it all while claiming he funds it all. This is the incredible brainwashing. Here's the clip. The youth that everybody's mentioned here in Africa, if everybody's raising living standards to the point where everybody's got a car and everybody's got air conditioning and everybody's got a big house, uh, well, the planet will boil over unless we find new ways of producing energy. Now, now expanding on that WhiteHouse.gov clip, the problem is warming happens in all the major studies. They had to admit this now, and then carbon dioxide goes up, and now NASA admits it's a cooling gas, and it's a trace gas. So it, it's a total red herring. Give up, you know, let us run the energy system and decide what you can have, or it'll burn the earth up. Right. Well, well, what they claim is is that it's the carbon emissions that are uh, causing greenhouse effect and then heating up the, the planet, okay? So, well, if we go to hydrogen, it doesn't heat up. It, it, if it puts out any excess at all, it's oxygen and, and uh, you know, clear water. Which is something we need. Yeah. And How by horrible. The way, by the way, listen, people, listen carefully to this. It is not global warming. It is solar system warming. The ice caps on Mars are diminishing, which means they're melting. The ice. Uh, uh, the UN voted and said the sun doesn't affect temperature. The, yeah, but the ice on some of the moons of Jupiter are is melting. But I'm being sarcastic. I mean, they voted and said the sun doesn't affect us. The sun is everything. Well, they used to tell us the world was flat. <laughs> but, I mean, how dumb do they think we are? The sun is the main driver of climate. Well, they think we're pretty dumb if all we do is watch mainstream media. I agree. Now, now. Let me throw this out, and we're going to go break, come back with calls here, and then into overdrive, probably. We're sitting here looking at this. I mean, I just want to point out that they claim they're the ones trying to save the Earth. They're the ones that are damaging. Absolutely. The genetic engineering. I mean, look at that. Well, you're looking at the dictionary under hypocrisy, and you find government officials. I mean, there it is. They, they, uh, they're in the pocket of the vested interest, which means the oil company. We're going to take questions. Hi, Alex and Jim. Howdy, Mike. Um, hey. Jim, uh, Jim, I wanted to pose this question to you. Um, Alex has a fully functioning 
uh, social networking uh, website, planetinfowars.com, I believe. Would you agree that on planet Earth, this website is by far the greatest potential tool which could be used to allow people to organize together into national and even global protests? Sure, sure. We set up a social network about a year ago. I don't talk about it enough. It's planetinfowars.com. Millions of people use it, and there's anything you want to set up, you can do it as long as it's legal and lawful and not obscene. And it's a great place to organize and have folks meet together. And, and I, I said that in my speech last night that you were at, and, the, and, and the, uh, you just gave a speech before me, is that it is the people. They're going to have to lead. We can point out problems and do research all day, but from a cop on the beat to a school teacher to a doctor, they're going to have to decide with their moral decisions where they stand. Well, here's the good news. Uh, there's more of us than there are of them. But we got to get organized. If you go get organized, then you need a social And good social people don't want to get in people's smart. business. Right. We've got to start doing that. Exactly. And I'll tell you something. I've been playing very low key, and I've been playing the game for years and years and years, writing books, trying not trying to attack anybody. I stay off Facebook. I don't yell and scream at people. But I tell you what, it's time to stop playing nice because the people we're up against are not playing nice. Good. I'm ready for you to give them some Texas hell. <laughs> Can I go after them, Mars? <laughs> That's right. Turn it loose, give them, open a can? Yeah, well, the last time I was in the airport and told them, no, you're not going to grope me, and no, you're not going to scan me with those uh, de uh, destructive body scanners, and they call the cops on me. Jim, okay, I am working in the alternative energy research market. How does that market, how does my company get funded? We need a chunk of change. Well, no, no, no. Let me tell you what. I can't really tell you what to do because going out and trying to find funding, that's everybody's looking for that. Here's, But I can tell you two things not to do, okay? Number one, your first inclination is if you come up with a valid uh, alternative energy uh, device is to run, get it patented, okay? Don't do it because when you give it to the patent office, you're giving it to the government. The government, if they see that it'll actually work, They'll uh, put it under national security, wrap it up, and you'll never see it again. Two, don't let the big companies buy it up. They're going to say, well, what a wonderful... That's right. Project. Build it, let open it. source it, give it to right. everybody. That's right. In fact, I know this sounds counterintuitive, but it's true. Put it out on the Internet. And then you'll be the consultant who can then help everybody set it up. Exactly, because most people, like right now, most people know how to make beer. Most people can grow tobacco, but they don't. They'll go buy it. Okay, so if you come up with a device, put it all out there. I got to let Mars, tell folks about these devices you've seen, the specific generators. All you put in is water, and it right. runs your house. Right. Well, uh, I know where one's in existence. I've seen them operate. Uh, it's called a hydrogen generator. It's about the size of a coffee can. Runs off of hydrogen, oxygen. Uh, okay, so theoretically what you do is you just take some water, any old water, lake water, ditch water, you run it across an electrolyzing plate, you separate the hydrogen and the oxygen, you burn that in the firing chamber with a spark. Plug, and turn a turbine. And and that produces instant steam because you got water. That turns a turbine. We'll be right back. You were getting into how these hydrogen generators work, start back over, and then get into your friend they basically killed, Arkansas sided with that. Yeah, yeah. Well, he, um, he got the idea for this thing and then built it and... Uh, it actually worked. I've seen it work. Uh, there, and uh, but it got people would uh, take off, and the uh, big companies tried to come and buy it up. He wouldn't sell it to them. And uh, this thing basically could uh, produce superheated steam, which could then turn a turbine, uh, produce all the electricity you want. And then when the steam condensed, you had potable water. Okay, clear water. So it not only was a water purifier, but an energy generator, and it's about the size of a coffee can. And I've seen it work. It works. Okay. Uh, and then, the, but the next thing you know, we were off uh, visiting in China, and when we got back, we found out that he had been found in his car uh, up in Denton County, and a hose run into the tailpipe, and uh, they ruled it a suicide. And yet, I, my wife and I, and all the friends, everybody knew him. Nobody believes that. But how can you prove anything? Well, listen, I know people that have developed uh, products that have made hundreds of millions of dollars in medical devices and medical treatments and drugs and salves and things like that. And they say government's point blank, this is a, disrupt, a disruptive technology. If, if it doesn't play ball with the big boys, they don't allow it. 
Right. Or the big boys will buy it and just warehouse it. Right. I guess the analogy or the parable or the allegory would be at the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark, that warehouse just full of all those boxes of other secret things. All right, here's another one. When I was working for the newspaper, I covered this story where Western Electric, which was the R&D facility for Bell Electric, uh, Bell Telephone at the time, had developed, again, a little coffee can type device that was a solar collector generator. And, uh, you know, uh, every time your phone rings, it uses just a little, the, the old telephones. It took a little bit of juice to ring the bell, right? So, but over a year, and with all the telephones, that was millions of dollars in electricity uh, that it was costing the phone company. So they came up with this little solar collector generator, and they were going to put it on the pole, telephone poles of all the neighborhoods, and they'd collect a little bit of sunlight, energy, hold it, and then ring the telephones. It was going to save them millions, Okay. Well, the problem is, just as they got ready to patent it, somebody realized, now, wait a minute, if we put this out, somebody's going to get hold of one, they'll take it apart, they'll figure out how to make a solar collector generator, they'll make a bigger one, they can run their house and have their own independent electricity, so they shelled it, put it back in their closet. Last, the last the night, the video's up at InfoWars.com, Raymond Teague, who was one of the head uh, Apollo engineers, you know, he's on the TV shows, the mm -hmm. photos, he's there, he said a lot off record we can't repeat. Why do they tell me this stuff? Unfortunately. But, unfortunately, but as journalists, we wear those hats. We can't. I'm mainly a commentator, but I wear the journalist hat, so I never tell. Never kiss and tell. Learned that with the cheerleaders very quickly when I was about 15. <laughs> but, uh, and, uh, but the point is, is that I never kiss and tell. He, but what he did tell us is on record about when he was working at RCA in between the Apollo program Skylab, and then he went on to the shuttle program, what they admitted. Uh, tell folks about that. Oh, well, they, you know, they, they, they've had anti-gravity, and he saw one they'd put out in the company newsletter, as I recall. And, yeah, show the guy floating and, around on it, the engineer. Said, yeah, yeah, we've developed anti-gravity, and uh, oh, I, you've got that clip, right? Aren't you going to show that? Well, it's up on the side, but the point is, it's just wild. Raymond's a real guy, I right. mean, well, and he's telling us this. And this isn't just one story from one guy out of there. Uh, in, in my book, uh, The uh, Rise of Fourth Reich, I believe, I uh, detailed how that right after World War II, there was a series of articles by William Lear, the guy who invented the Learjet, and by several other very reputable people, and they were all talking about anti-gravity, and that was the next thing, and it was going to be, you know, and then it all went dark. That was the end of that, and today they have got it so suppressed that if you go talk to an aeronautical engineer and start talking about anti-gravity, he'll laugh at you and and run out of the room because well, they say it doesn't exist. Back in the they late did, 80s, they, had they did the Hans and Fleischmann or whatever it was, Zero Point Energy. Oh, it was a mayonnaise jar. Turned out that test actually worked. Now, it wasn't really very feasible to transfer the power, and it didn't create a lot of power, but the point is it was a real test. Hundreds of universities have now done similar things and proven it. Right. But since that hoax happened, or they claimed it was a hoax, no coverage. Right. No coverage. Now... Uh, first off, I was just wondering, whatever happened to hydrogen cars, you know, you heard all about them, you thought it was going to be the next thing, and then it just kind of... Well, it was going to be hydrogen know, cells. They always put it in something yeah. that doesn't... Well, yeah, exactly. It could be hydrogen cars, but uh, they they were trying to go halfway. They were trying to do public relations and say, okay, yeah, we're going we're gonna to start shifting to hydrogen, but it had to be through a hydrogen cell so they can keep control over the look, smart technology. Look, this is 20-year-old technology, the smartphone at least. The B-2 bomber been around for 20 years before they rolled it out in 87. Right. They can have this little baby access the whole world, run for hours, take photos, do the whole nine yards off, off the electricity in the wall. They are suppressing all types of stuff because once they turn loose of the energy control system in the economy, in the uh, microcosm that is your personal life and the larger ecosystem, it's over. And these are control freaks, so they won't do it. But as you see the world having less energy, as you see the devaluation of currency, you see rioting, murder, war expanding. Pollution. They, pollution. They hope to ride all this to victory. Because they think they can screw everybody and get away with it. You know, it's like there's an article right here uh, out of the London Telegraph about how the cosmetics have all these chemicals and estrogen mimickers in them. I talk about this and they attack me. I mean, do the elite think they're going to put out a bunch of poison in the food and water and not have it blow back on their kids?
I mean, even if they think they're politically immune, God is the spirit of the universe, whatever you want to call it, is not going to allow them to get away with this. You reap what you sow, man. What comes around goes around. You're not going to get away with screwing everybody. And they're not getting away with it now. They just don't understand that because they still control the mass media. The richest families, most of their kids end up in mental institutions or commit suicide. They're lucky if they got one kid out of five that learns how to tie their shoelaces. <laughs> oh, man, this is a great thing you've built. Let me tell you. This is really good. This is really working great. You're really in charge of things. Because you're able to screw and rob everybody. Just being able to dominate is not the main sign of leadership. Two more. If we were to, if we were as a people were to all together decide that the way to take the power back is to take the fuel back and started working on having electrolyzers in everybody's home. I know Honda's already developed it. Uh, yeah. GE. Yeah, they got things. it. They got it. If we did it, if we did it and decided we were going to do it. Wouldn't that just pull the power out from underneath the power supply? Because once we drive those costs down, a fuel, the, the food prices would go down, the economy would turn around, $800 billion a year going out for fuel. Yep. Oh, yeah, the whole That's thing's about electrolyzer. artificial scarcity. Well, it's this simple. We're, we're always, we've been taught since childhood that man's basic necessities are food, clothing, and shelter. And I'm here to tell you. It's no, energy. It's energy. If you have energy, you can plow and food is it. energy. If you got energy, you can make your clothes. If you got energy, you can build a house. Okay, energy's it, and hydrogen's the way to go. And thank you for calling, and thank you for absolutely caller. Look at this. Look at this, look at this so-called quarter. It has no silver in it now. It's a new quarter, but it's the symbol of energy. In the past, it had to have real silver in it, which was a scarce commodity, a real energy. Mm -hmm. Now it's the symbol of energy, and they get the world for it. I mean, we are run by con artists. Yeah. Stop! Like, if we just stop complying, start talking, start speaking out, start questioning, it's over. Well, and what the caller's saying, and it's absolutely true, is right now, if you wanted to make your whole house energy independent with hydrogen, you can do it, but it's going to cost you fifty, sixty thousand dollars, and most people don't have that. But it's supply and demand. If everyone would say, I want that, then they'd start producing it. The more they produce, the little cheaper it would get. And pretty soon they get it down to right. maybe $1,000, $2,000. Right. Stop right there. I want you to expand on that before we take these two final calls. What, what, what he just said is the key to all of this. Why are the globalists waging war against the real free market? Against your vote, your ideas, real competitiveness? with their collectivism, with their austerity, saying you can't have progress, it hurts the earth. Because they're in a war to shut the economy down worldwide so you don't industrialize if you're in Africa. Or so we don't go to the next level of near free energy. Because once that happens, their monopoly is over. So they're in a race to kill the free market, to shut the economy down, with a planned economy to keep you in a dark age away from discovering all this. Because if we go to the new renaissance, it's over for everything they've done. Elaborate on what you just said. This, and by the way, they're losing. They're sliding downhill. They realize it. They're losing. They're losing. They're starting to lose, Jim. Well, and that's, that's why they're losing Because if they lose this, they lose everything else. Well, that's why they're they're losing it literally and figuratively, and that's why they're militarizing the police so that they've got a, a, a bulwark against the people, you know, to try to keep them in line. It's, it's absolutely amazing. But let me tell you, folks, it's this simple. If you want news, uh, turn in. Tune in CNN or, or ABC or whoever. But if you want to know what's really going on, then listen to Alex Jones and others like him. Well, this is history happening. All I want is a real future for my children and grandchildren, yes. just like you do. And these people running things are losers. I mean, I could go around and defraud people and run scams. I don't do that because it feels bad. Because I can feel it's hurting myself. And they need to get back to their basic human instinct and stop being losers. Well, it's just like politicians. You can't, you can't trust anything they say because they have to lie or they won't get elected, okay? That's not a condemnation. These are puppets. Yeah, that, it's not a condemnation uh, personally of politicians. It's just a sad fact of life is that they can't get elected unless they lie to you, okay? So you have to watch what they do. You have to watch their track record. So let's look at the track record of these so-called globalists, as they call themselves, these world elite, okay? Just over the past hundred years, 
We've had two world wars. We've had a depression. We've got an inflationary depression going on now. Hundreds of civil hundreds wars. Hundreds of little civil wars. Uh, a degradation of life, a degradation of, uh, of uh, in the environment. Their track record, folks, is not good. We need to get rid of them. I agree. One final call. But this, this is a historic broadcast. It's a very important broadcast. And I hope people pay attention to what's being said here. Because the establishment is a very unhappy group of failing people who use every dirty trick to stay in control. But the dirty tricks they're using are destroying the very island they're sitting on. Let me put it this way, folks. Here, here's my final thing. If you'll stop and think about it, you'll realize that... And I can assure you, Alex can assure you, that we have the technology right off the shelf today to make the earth a garden spot. We could provide basic food, clothing, shelter, basic medical attention to every single living person on this planet, okay? But it's not happening, is it? In fact, if you'll stop and think about it, we don't like to know this. We don't want to think about it. But right now, while you're listening to my voice, you know that all around this world, there are literally thousands, if not millions of children. 30 million a year. Starving to death, okay? I don't want that. Alice doesn't want that. I don't think anybody listening wants that. So why is it that way? Okay, because I'm here to tell you, somewhere, somebody wants it that way. And we got to figure out who that is and put a stop to it. You're absolutely right. They are blocking progress because they enjoy suffering. They enjoy suppressing humanity. They're on record saying it. And it is totally and completely disgusting that they claim they want to industrialize cleanly these other countries, but they actually block it. It is incredible.